As you might know, this is my garage. And even though I installed an alarm system into it, consisting of a light barrier, a stroboscope light, a siren and a controlino, somebody decided to break in about 4 months ago. Since then I improved the garage lock quite a bit. But the main problem is that my apartment is around 600 meters away from my garage. And I want to get notified there when somebody triggers the alarm system. As a solution to my problem, Elector sent me a handful of components. Consisting of two RFM95 LoRa boards with fitting breakout PCBs, two STM32 based microcontroller development boards and one LG02 Dragon LoRa compatible gateway. So in this video we will not only play around with the LoRa technology, but I will also create a small receiver and transmitter system based around LoRa, which will trigger a siren in my apartment when the alarm in my garage gets activated. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Elector, who helped to launch the first DIY electronics design movement in the Netherlands in the 1960s. 2020 marks Elector magazine's 50th year in Germany. And to celebrate, Elector is offering my viewers a 50% discount of a few of their products, like their magazine membership. I'm a member and you can be too. Check out the video description for more information. First off, LoRa stands for long range and its inventor, the company Zemtec, describes this wireless radio frequency technology as a long range, low power wireless platform that has become the de facto technology for Internet of Things or IoT networks worldwide. That already sounds pretty promising for my project, since I want to transmit very little data over a long distance. So let's continue by soldering the RFM95 boards to the breakout boards, to which I then also added some male headers and afterwards also decoupling capacitors. Now those RFM95 boards are according to the datasheet low power LoRa transceiver modules which basically means they can transmit and receive LoRa modulated data and thus they are the key component for my project. To interact with them they got an SPI interface, which obviously means we need a microcontroller to talk to them and some SPI codes in order to write and read from and to their registers. For the microcontroller parts, I unpacked the two development boards, which may be based around the STM32 microcontroller, but they look very similar to an Arduino Uno board. And yes, you could use an Arduino to interact with the RFM95 board, but the advantage of the STM32 board is that it works with 3.3V logic levels, instead of 5V logic levels of the Arduino and the RFM95 is only rated for 33 volts. With that being said, it was time to connect the two development boards to the two LoRa modules, according to the wiring scheme mentioned in the Arduino LoRa library, which I will be using to make coding a lot simpler. Last but not least, we need an antenna for the LoRa boards, which we can easily make by ourselves. According to these simple calculations I found in an Electro magazine article, we just need a piece of wire with a length of around 82mm. So I created two of those wire pieces and soldered them directly to the antenna pin of the LoRa boards. And just like that our test hardware setup was complete and it was time to connect both development boards to my computer. After then including the URL for the STM32 boards library and installing it under the boards manager, I also installed the Arduino LoRa library and continued by writing a bit of example code for a transmitter, which sends out a simple hello world, 
and some example code for receiver, which outputs its received message over the serial monitor along with its received signal strength indicator. After then selecting the correct STM32 nucleo board and uploading the codes, we can see that the receiver is successfully getting the sent messages from the transmitter. Awesome! But I was not done yet, because the transmitter will have to send out a proper alarm code when it will later get activated by the alarm system in my garage and the receiver will have to turn on a small MOSFET and thus a buzzer when it receives the correct alarm codes. That is why as a simulation for now, I added a tactile push button to the transmitter side and a small LED with current limiting resistor to the receiver side. For the transmitter codes, all I had to do was to set an alarm message and use the push button inputs in order to send it out. The receiver code was a bit more complicated though, since I needed to store the received message in an array, which then gets compared to the set alarm message and only if they match, the LED gets activated. Now after uploading both codes to the boards and doing some tests, it seems like everything works just fine. And thus it was time to create proper schematics for both the transmitter and receiver. With the help of them, I connected all of the components to one another on two pieces of perfboard, in order to create more sturdy receiver and transmitter systems. And after around 2 hours of soldering, the perfboard circuits were complete. And thus, I did a small test with them in order to confirm that they still worked just fine. But before I headed into my garage, I realized that I completely forgot all about the LoRa gateway and thus I started wondering whether it could improve my project. All I had to do to use it was to connect its one port to one of the LAN ports of my home network router and hook up 12 volt power to it. After then typing in its IP address into a browser, I was able to access the gateway with the username root and the password Dragino. Then I had a look at all the menus and options the gateway offers. And there were actually so many that I got confused pretty quickly. And thus turned to the user manual in order to get a better understanding of what it offers and how to use it. While researching, I also found this diagram, which perfectly describes what the gateway is capable of. It can basically receive data from LoRa nodes, which it can upload to a cloud server through your home network. This uploaded data can then be viewed from other devices, or the gateway can send the data to other LoRa nodes. I would say this concept is pretty useful if you need to log, for example, lots of temperature or humidity data for a greenhouse for which you can use a LoRa WAN server, MQTT or TCP IP server. And I know those terms all sound super complicated if you're not into this stuff, like me. But the user manual actually gives you pretty precise instructions on how to use those three methods, including even Arduino or in my case STM32 sketches. My intended system however is so simple that it does not require such server upload methods. And I also do not want to be forced to have a stable internet connection in order to make my system work. However, the gateway can be used directly in order to send out or receive LoRa messages. And it even features an option to use a customized script that can react to different receive LoRa messages. That actually got me thinking whether I should implement it as a kind of center point for my system. But after trying for hours and hours to send out the correct alarm codes and rewriting the custom Linux shell script, I gave up on this idea because it would just overcomplicate things. So for now I will not be using the gateway, but maybe in another project. With that being said, I powered up my receiver system and headed into my garage in order to solder the transmitter alarm inputs to one 5V Controlino header pin and also to hook up power to the transmitter. 
To make everything work, I also had to add a couple lines of code to my Controlino software before I uploaded it to the system. And as you can see, after triggering the alarm, my receiver station in my apartment started screaming as well. Which means this project was a success. But if you got range problems, like me when I started testing, then you can always play around with the transmit power, spreading factor and bandwidth settings mentioned in the Arduino LoRa library. And you can also try out different antennas. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!